Hi everyone, my name is Peter McCann. I'm a sheep and sucker beef farmer from Limavady in County Derry. Uh, welcome to my farm here for the virtual farm walk. Um, I'm just going to talk you through some of the stuff that we're at on the farm here at this time of year. It's the springtime, so it's the busiest time of year for us. So uh, we're, we're lambing at the minute. Um, our, our, we have 250 ewes to lamb this year, and we actually had our first cow calved yesterday, so we have 20 cows to calve as well. So as you can see, it's mainly an upland farm. That's why we have uh, sheep and sucker cows. So when I say sucker cow, that means a cow that the, the calf is staying on that uh, cow all year, and the calf will eventually be used either to, to breed another replacement cow or for, or for beef. So it's different to a dairy a dairy cow. Um, this land suits itself well to, to sheep and suckers. It's it's good at growing grass. It's not really suitable for arable crops or barley or wheat or anything like that. So that's why we have that type of system here. So. Our farm's with th uh, farm yard here is about 300 feet above sea level, but the highest point in our farm is 1,300 feet. Although most of the land is around the yard here, um, it kind of just goes up to, to the side of the mountain and back down again uh, along a, a road here. Um, we're lambing now; uh, it's, it's near the end of March, so the, the gestation period for a ewe, that's the length of time a ewe is pregnant for, is 147 days or so on average. It varies slightly, I suppose. So I put the ram, that's the male sheep, out with the, the female sheep, the ewe, at the end of October and they're, they were due to start lambing there from, from last week. So we're kind of in the middle of it all now. Um, so it should take about, I'd say after a cycle for ewe is 17 days, so I tend to say after 17 days I should have 85 or 90% of my ewe's lamb. So it's a, a lot happening just within a fairly short window, two or three weeks. Okay, so this is... A, this is a black face ewe, with also known as I suppose, a horned ewe. Um, we have 70 of these ewes here, and the, the main, uh, they're, they're a hardier breed of sheep, it's more suitable to the uplands or hill areas. Um, so the main reason I have them, first of all, is to have some hill land which uh, suits them well, but also what I want to do with these sheep is breed this type of lamb, which is a grey faced lamb. Um, so it's actually, this is a crossbreed, as you can see there's no horns here, or it looks very different to the muller. Um, so that black face ewe is put to a border leaster ram, so that's a, a big uh, white sheep with big tall ears, if a few of them we'll maybe see later, and that produces this, this grey face, uh, face sheep here. The idea that I want, I want as many ewe lambs as possible, because, and this is actually a, a wee ewe here, because I want to keep these for replacement. So my main flock, the other 180 sheep here, are as this type of sheep here, and we'll see plenty of them later. Uh, they're they're grey face sheep. So to recap, the horned ewe is crossed with the border leaster to produce this grey face, and this is the, the, the main ewe that I have on my flock. Um, these lambs were born yesterday, um, and you see, they're uh, they've got a good suck that we kept them inside for a day. They just to, everyone got to know each other, and now we're going to uh, take her out to the field to grass. Okay folks, so this is our main type of ewe here that I talked about earlier. Those wee, wee lambs, whenever they grow up, they'll be big ewes like this. So these are adult ewes, uh, grey face type, as I said earlier. Um, there's actually, you can see maybe the one with the big ears there. Uh, and there's another one maybe around the back there as well. That's the border leaster, so I'm actually trying to breed the ram off that. That'll be, cr that'll be crossed to the black face ewe to produce this. So in effect, the the, bla the black face and that border leaster with the big ears are the parents of these type of ewes or main grey face ones. You can see they, they kinda, they're called grey face for a reason. They have uh, spotted uh, faces, some of them kind of brown, some of them uh, black and white. So we breed these ewes ourselves, so we've obviously had them right through from since, since they were born. It means uh, we aren't going out and buying loads of sheep from different farmers every year. So it means there isn't a risk of disease being bought in or different problems. So we kind of know our, our sheep right right from the very get-go. Um, these ewes are obviously inside at the minute for lambing. In mid-January, which was about halfway through pregnancy, we scanned all our sheep. And everything that was scanned for two or three lambs with twins or triplets, uh, we separated it off. 
and we lamb them inside, especially uh, the, the grey face ewes with the twins. So when they're inside, they're on straw bedding here. Um, we have we've, we've one uh, shed with wire slats, and they're getting they're eating these bales of silage and a round feeder. So this is the silage here. It's it's just really grass that has been cut in the summertime uh, and wrapped up in, in black plastic to help it ferment and, and keeps well. And along with that, in the last six weeks b b before lambing, uh, we, we started feeding uh, nuts as well. So these are uh, made in a feed mill. Um, they're, they're basically a couple of different crops combined, soya, wheat and barley, and a few other additives as well. And there's minerals added in there too. So as the ewe gets further on in pregnancy, she can, because the lambs get bigger in her belly, she can actually eat less grass or less silage, whatever you're offering her. Offering to her, so we give her these concentrates as well. So it's really uh, uh, cheaper like ourselves. They need a balanced diet, so they're getting their fibre and some other uh, nutrition through the silage. And the last few weeks before pregnancy, we give them kind of these as almost like a dessert or sweets to top up their nutritional needs. So once the lamb, we'll probably feed. Uh, depends on how much grass we have or what the growing season is. We'll feed these for another couple of weeks and then we'll gradually wean them off and they'll just be eating grass then the rest of the year. So we're hopefully only feeding uh, concentrates for six or eight weeks at most uh, throughout the year. You can see the sheep actually when they're facing on their left hand side, there's a, a, a slightly over to the left in the middle there, that you was a green and yellow mark, so she scanned for three, and that you there is just a single yellow mark, so that's, uh, that's just uh, twins. So that's how, how we know what, what, what they expect. And the reason it's slightly over to the left hand side is because when the guy was scanning them, he's, he's sitting on their left hand side with his hand down below their belly with the ultrasound scanner. So he always marks it just that slightly bit to the left. And you can also see their, all the yews are tagged. Um, they're tagged you know, shortly after birth. So we know each of them right through. And that's for, I suppose, for role management records, but also it's, it's required in law for traceability. So all sheep in Northern Ireland have to be tagged within, I think it's six months or whenever they're sold, which is whatever, whichever sooner. So that means we're, we're able to trace these sheep. If we, if we happen to sell some of these or whatever, um, the, the, whoever buys them will be able to trace them right back to, to this farm. So this is, I suppose, our, our main product, our main breeding objective of the whole thing. This is a Suffolk lamb out of one of these grey face ewes. Um, this boy was born actually about one o'clock uh, last night. I had to get up out of bed to, 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 to just give him an extra wee pull. Um, so this is a, a Suffolk lamb. You can see black head. The, the, his father has a, a purebred Suffolk ram. Um, and, and the idea with this, this boy was ultimately going to, to, to the food chain. Um, his, if he had a sister, we actually sell the females of these as breeding stock. There seems to be quite a good demand for that. So we sell all female sheep in this farm are either kept ourselves for replacements as greyface or the Suffolk uh, females are sold then in September time at about six months of age and they'll go on to different farms and, and stay as ewes. So when this wee guy was born last night, uh, we got him out and the ewe, he's obviously quite wet coming out, out of the ewe's belly. She licks him as, as a natural instinct to you know to, to clean him up, make him dry, but also to, to kind of to waken them up. So as you can see now, he's nice and dry. Um, we also uh, put iodine on his navel, so his navel is effectively his belly button, and this is this wee thing here where uh, uh, he was attached to the yew inside, and this is where he, he grew uh, and got all his uh, uh, nutrients whenever uh, the yew was pregnant, but. I, can, I suppose it is an open wound and it's uh, an avenue for infection or bugs and germs to get in. So we uh, put iodine on that immediately to sterilise it and to help dry it up quicker uh, to, to reduce that risk of them getting any infection through that. Um, once they're born then, they go into a, a small pen with the ewe for uh, uh, maybe half a day or a day before they go out to grass to make sure they bond well and the lamb gets uh, his first suck from the ewe's udder, so that's the first drink of milk, and the first milk that a ewe has is called colostrum, so it's got a high protein content and it also contains anti antibodies, so those are cells that uh, help build the lamb's immune system, and it'll help it fight off any infections that it, that it gets, and it's really important I suppose for all mammals to, to get that early on, uh, the earlier it gets it the better, it gives it a better start in life, but it also, a lamb has a better uh, 
ability to absorb the antibodies within the first few years of life. So that's why we're always in a rush to make sure the lamb gets a really good start by getting a good suck from its mother's milk. So he's going to go back into his mum and then uh, hopefully later on today or tomorrow they'll, they'll go out to grass. Okay, so we're on our, our, our hill land at the minute. Um, this is the highest point in our farm. As I say, at the top corner there is about 1,300 feet above sea level. Um, it's about a mile from the farmyard, so it's a quite a quick drive. It's just along the roadside, so we can be here in five minutes uh, from home. Um, these yokes behind me, we're just after feeding them. They're scanned for singles, or, or so they're carrying one lamb. So they have a, a lot lower nutritional need than, than the twos, and the yokes carrying two and three. Uh, down in the farmyard. So that means they, they can lie out here um, nibble at this harder type of grass. Uh, this is semi-natural grassland, it's unimproved and we don't uh, sow any fertilizer or, or use uh, pesticides or herbicides up here at all. Um, also preferably this time of year we'd actually have these ewes lambing in a field or two closer to home but because it's, there's been so much rain recently it's actually drier up here and we think it's, it's maybe better for them for the next week or so until hopefully some better weather comes. So as you can see there's the odd lamb running through them, they're also lambing away at the minute. Uh, I just check these about four times a day to make sure nothing needs any assistance with lambing and then over the next week or so I'll gradually take the ewes that have lambed off with their lamb and they'll go to better grass uh, as they start to produce more milk for their lambs for the, throughout, throughout the summer time. We also give them that concentrate that I showed you earlier in the shed but they're getting actually a lot less than those ewes because as I say they're only carrying uh, one lamb so uh, to be honest a big concern with, with single ewes like this is overfeeding them because the lamb might become too big inside their belly and can have a, you can have issues then getting it safely delivered. So we're trying to get that, strike that balance between giving them an, an, enough to get off to a good start as they, as they lamb down and start producing milk, but not to overfeed them during that pregnancy period. Um, this land, as I say, is, is semi-natural and improved, or unimproved, so uh, it's really suitable to, to sheep. Uh, we outwinter some ewes here throughout the winter and then as I say, they're here at the minute, they'll probably be coming off it in the next week or two if the weather improves. And then there mightn't be a lot of sheep on it really throughout the summer until the grass starts to come. Obviously this is higher up, so grass is colder here, grass grows a lot later in the year. So it could be May and June before it really gets going here. Um, and then we maybe will graze it with cows at some point or uh, then ewes after the ewes lamb. They, they have their lambs on them for about 12 or 14 weeks. And then after that, they're, they're dried off. The lambs are taken away when they're, they're big enough to eat enough grass for themselves. We'll probably put the ewes back here for a while on their, on their summer holidays, uh, so to speak, uh, in August time then. So I'm just going to head to the, to, to the back fence here now to make sure there's the odd ewe didn't gather up. I can see already from here, some of them have uh, lambs at their feet. Uh, and uh, it's because it's quite the distance ago, I have my binoculars with me too to, to help me see anything. So if a ewe's got a lamb there, I know, I know she's grand, but it's the odd one that maybe hasn't gathered up to feed that uh, I'd be maybe be worried about that she might need a hand uh, lambing. So we'll go and see here what's happening. Okay, so we're back down on the home farm here now. Um, the field we're in, I suppose, is rel it's, it's about a four acre field. It's relatively green, but the grass on it is quite short. Um, and it, it varies you know, quite starkly to, to this behind me. Um, this field here, there's, it's probably one of the best fields of grass we have at the minute on the farm. So when the ewe lambs, um, the lambs are born, as I say, we keep it in the pen for a day or so, or, and then we let it out to good lush grass like this behind me. So we've been saving this kind of all winter um, for, for this time of year, letting the grass grow. Also, this grass behind me was reseeded last year, so that means we uh, got rid of the, the old grass. And, uh, some farmers plough it down, we actually uh, just uh, drill new seed directly into the into the ground after we cut silage off it, which was what we were feeding the ewes at the minute. So that new grass is, grows more vigorously, responds to the fertiliser better, and as you can see it's lovely and green there now, uh, and it'll get ewes and lambs off to a really good start. So this field, as I say, is bare, that's because the, the sheep in it, that we'll see in a wee second, um, are, I suppose I would call them lower priority stock at this time of year. They are, are grey-faced ewe lambs from last year, so remember that wee boy I was holding at the very start? That was them exactly 12 months ago. So they won't be put to a ram until this autumn coming. So really they're just running about all winter, kind of ticking over, so that's why I'm happy enough them grazing 
these bare fields and I'm not in a, in a ru mad rush to, to stuff them with grass. To be honest, I don't actually want them getting too big because then they become too big of a, of a yo uh, when they become adults. So I'm just tipping these along nicely. They're, uh, they, were, they were getting some concentrate there, but I'm trying to wean them off it here now. At the end of October, I put the ram out to the yo, that's the male, to the female, and breeding started. Um, midway through pregnancy, around uh, mid-January, they were scanned. And then now, at this time of year, uh, they're lambing down. After that, in about three or four weeks time, when a lamb is a good size, it'll get its first vaccine for a, a range of different diseases. So it's a single shot. Um, and then three weeks later, or four weeks later, I'll follow it up with a, a booster shot. So a bit like your, your COVID vaccine that, that we all got, you get two shots of that. In the meantime, when, when the grass starts growing and it warms up, this is well into the you know, early summer now, I'll be keeping an eye on them and taking samples of, uh, of their uh, fresh dung through the fields. I send that off to a vet to see if there's any worms in the dung and if there is, when it gets to a certain level, I'll, I'll, I'll worm the, 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 the young lambs with a drench, which is just like a kind of a medicine that put down their throat with a, a, a wee gun. And I'll keep doing that all summer just to keep, keep that worm burden not too low because I don't want them, uh, it is a natural thing to have some worms in, in sheep actually, but if it's too high, they'll, be, they'll have diarrhea, you know, scar behind, and, and, and maybe not thrive as well as they should. So that'll go on all summer, I suppose, and then in, in June time, I'll, I'll shear the sheep. So effectively, the wool is a byproduct of the whole uh, thing. Unfortunately, it isn't making much money at the minute, so it's, it's really, I shear my own sheep myself, so I have a very small profit when I don't include my own time, but for any farmer that gets a contractor in or someone else to shear them, they're actually losing money by taking the wool off them, but, but it has to come off because by, by June time, July, it's very warm and the, and the sheep need to get rid of that uh, wool. Um, on into the summer then, uh, about 12 or 14 weeks after the lambs are born, they'll come off the ewe, they're big enough, the ewe will stop producing milk or produce very little at that stage and uh, I'll target the lambs then, they're my top priority stock at that stage for all the best grass. Um, and then by, by August time I should have my first meal lambs ready to go uh, to the factory for, uh, for slaughter. By mid-September then, all my female stock that I'm selling are sold on a single day and they go for, for breeding stock. Um, so then just throughout the autumn I'll be weighing my male lambs every fortnight or so to see and assess their the fat cover on their back and, and a lamb, you know, is ideally about 45 kilos or so or 48 kilos when it's ready for slaughter, it's, it's, the, it's the right size for, for all the different cuts that it'll eventually, um, it'll eventually be, be caught up and butchered for. So that's really the, the, the cycle then, um, at that stage the ewes are maybe on the hill, they'll come down about a month or so before before I put them back to the ram again and uh, I'll put them on good grass and give them a mineral drench and actually I'll clip up their tail too uh, so they're, they're nice and clean uh, going into the winter time and it's easier for the ram then to, to serve the ewe as well when the, when the tails are clipped on them. And the whole thing starts again, and that's just our, our cycle. Um, it's been going on in this part of the world for, for generations, and I suppose it's a privilege to, to still continue it and, and be a part of it. All right, so this is Ben. He's uh, one, of the, one of the sheep dogs in the farm. We have a couple of different dogs, and I suppose a couple of younger dogs that are we're trying them out to see if they're good workers. Not all border collies, unfortunately, are, are guaranteed to be uh, to be make good sheep dogs, but. Ben's very useful to be honest. I would, if I had to choose between having a dog or a tractor, I would actually choose a dog every time because when most farms like myself, getting labour and help is hard, um, and when you have a good dog, it, it, it saves a, a lot of a lot of hassle, a lot of work. It does the work of ten or twelve people, to be honest. I think um, Ben's obviously an adult dog. He, he's he's about eight or nine. Um, but he's still going well, and I've just showed him there, and some of them, uh, them hoggets, so that's last year's lambs, so they're not carrying any lambs, so Ben chasing at them there, bringing them up to us, didn't, didn't cause any harm. I wouldn't do that to pregnant ewes this time of year, uh, because obviously the wee lambs are in their, in their belly. Um, I've been on, on, on whistle commands, but you can also, uh, when I started my training dog, I used to start them in voice commands, so just saying different words. Um, helps uh, to, to get them going and then you can switch them over to, to whistles. Uh, an upland farm like this, I suppose a dog is really vital where we were earlier, up on the hill, um, to, to be able to run, run well out and, and get the sheep up for you. 
and also I suppose to do what he's told, they know when they stop and or when they stop whenever he's told I suppose. Um, the shepherd always knows that best and rather than the dog. You may be seen there when, when Ben was behind the, the, the lambs, they were run towards me and if he, as he moves to each side, if he moves to the left they tended to move to the other side. And people sometimes wonder how a sheep knows that. It's because when, when their eyes are on the sides of their head, they actually have a much clearer vision of what's going on behind them than, than, than people do, than we do. So that means when, that, when Ben does move behind them, or even if I'm behind them myself, moving them, you, you can manipulate them and move whichever way you, you, re you really want, because they, they, can, they can really see you, not fully behind themselves, but they, up to 280, uh, 280 or 320 degrees. I've read somewhere that uh, the sheep can actually see right behind themselves. Um, when it, we put those lambs out there, and a, a ewe recognises her young lamb by smell and by the whenever they, they kind of bleat to each other, the wee murmur of a bleat, rather than, than sight, I suppose. So if a ewe is a bit mixed up there, or if a lamb's lying, you, you'll see her going over and smelling it. That, that's really for her to, to identify her own lamb. Uh, this this crook is actually I suppose traditionally they would have been wooden, but we use aluminium crooks because they're they're lightweight and they're strong. But uh, I, I suppose it helps me walking on the hill too, even though I'm, I'm relatively young to be walking stick. But it actually serves a purpose uh, for for catching sheep. So I can uh, if I have to catch a ewe that's lambing or, or catch say a lamb out in the field with a, a bad foot, I uh, run them up along a fence, maybe with the dog. Uh, or, or get them cornered in, in, in a corner and uh, just wrap this, this hook around their neck. It sounds a bit, bit rough but it actually isn't too sore on them because sheep are, are very strong there above the brisket and their neck. And I suppose it's good for two reasons. First of all, it gives me an extra four foot or five foot on them. So uh, the closer you, you get the sheep to, to catch it, the, the more flighty they are and the more the chances are that they actually pass you or sidestep you. So it gives me a, a good extra distance. I can catch you out there. And also, um, it saves my back, so it means that I'm not, you know, launching myself at them or di diving. I can just catch a yo really standing, and that extra give in my arm, I think, helps your, your lower back quite a lot. Because if you did it uh, several times a day, every day, it really wouldn't uh, be, be, be good for the muscles in your back if you could pull the disc or something. So that's why it serves two purposes that way, um, and it's just it's easier on the sheep and the shepherd, I suppose. So everyone, thanks for uh, taking time to, to watch this video and for me to, to, to show you around our farm today in the springtime. Hopefully you learned a bit about, about sheep farming and just basically what we're at here. At the end of the day, it's a, it's a business, it's a family business. It's, it's been going on here for a long time, but it's also a, a, a way of life and a heritage for us. Uh, so it's, it's a pleasure to, to show you around. And hopefully when you're driving around the countryside and you see small farms dotted Throughout Northern Ireland, there's 24,000 of us here. Uh, you, you uh, maybe make you, you maybe think more, but there's not just uh, some guy running after sheep or cows. There's a, a story behind it, and there's a quite a lot of effort goes into it uh, every year. If you've any more questions or queries, or want to learn more about farming, the Ulster Farmers Union website is available uh, as a resource there, a learning pack about different types of farming in Northern Ireland. That's it, folks. Thanks very much, and I hope to see you all again.